St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta. And the Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of her husband, deceased and living relatives and friends, for the return of family members to the church, in thanksgiving for favors received, and for world peace. We know that this broadcast brings meaning to the lives of many thousands of Canadians, and so we thank you for the gift of this telecast. And we begin this celebration as we should begin all things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We take a moment to acknowledge that we stand here this day in the presence of our God who has given us so much. And yet we have to at the same time acknowledge that we haven't always expressed gratitude for the gifts that we receive by the way that we've lived. So we acknowledge our failings and we ask forgiveness of God and we ask forgiveness of each other. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Father, watch over your family and keep us safe in your care, for all our hope is in you. And grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom the Father foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those whom the Father predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
Gospel according to Luke. And Jesus went through one town and village after another, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. And someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? And Jesus said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will try to enter and not be able. Once the owner of the house has got up and shut the door, and you stand outside and begin to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then in reply, he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and we drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I do not know where you come from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrown out. And then people will come from east and west, from north and south, and will eat in the kingdom of God. Indeed, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. I have no doubt that when we listen to this particular text from Luke, and we listen to the words of Jesus, it probably sounds as if salvation is restricted to a few. The tone is heavy, the words are, are loaded, but actually the opposite is true. Salvation is open to everyone. Then why does Jesus speak of the narrow door? The question put to Jesus can be understood in terms of numbers, but that's not the way that Jesus answers or takes it. His answer is really quite direct. Salvation passes through the narrow door. And a key to understanding the response of Jesus is found at the beginning of the text, reminding us that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. Gutierrez points out that in the Gospels, the way to Jerusalem expresses Jesus' determination to fulfill faithfully his Father's mission, to proclaim and to practice the good news, and to do so to its ultimate consequences. The listener's question and Jesus' answer take place in that context on the way to Jerusalem. Jesus is doing the mission of the Father. He's fulfilling the will of the Father. The narrow door is restricted, but not in reference to people or to numbers, but in terms of the right to be saved. Salvation doesn't come from a mere physical closeness to Jesus. It's not enough to eat and drunk with him or to have listened to him in the public squares. Jesus calls people to come come after him, and it is a narrow way. It is the gate of compassion, sharing with the poor, reaching out to others. It's not eating with him and being in his presence that makes us disciples, but whether or not we serve the least and follow humbly in the footsteps of Jesus and his teaching. Father McBride, a redemptress, puts it this way. He said, he observes better still that the teaching of Jesus is clearly opposed to the kind of national or religious elitism that presumes that it has an assured place in God's kingdom. 
as one who is treated as an outsider by his own people, Jesus has a natural allegiance to those who don't belong to the right crowd. But there's no substitute for our own personal decision and life commitment. Jesus described the condition for opening the door when he said, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and keep it. If you will, we can say that the door policy is determined by faithfulness to the word of God and the teaching. It's universal. It's open to all who hear the word of God and who keep it. I think Father Eddie points out that the parable that Jesus or that Luke recounts avoids abstractions such as perfection, truth, or worthiness, but deals instead with authenticity, earnestness, and integrity. He goes on to say that the sense that many will come from the East and from the West, and that the last will be first and the first last, turns upside down any tendency on the part of organized religion to deify the size and shape of any particular door. After the month I recently spent in Jerusalem, I came away with a conviction that a lot of the tension in the Middle East comes from the extremes in the principal religious groups. And among those, I include Christians, Muslims, and Jews. It's the, really the self-righteous positions and it's the lack of tolerance which are so provocative. We're called to live as brothers and sisters and to learn from each other and to respect the way that each prays and to appreciate the presence of the divine in the other. It may come as a surprise that to many of you, perhaps you're not aware that this day is the beginning of Diwali, the Festival of Lights, a three-day celebration of the Hindu community. It celebrates the victory of truth over falsehood, of light over darkness, of life over death, and of good over evil. For the Hindus, it marks the beginning of a new year, a time for family reconciliation, especially among brothers and sisters and adoration of the divine. Cardinal Torin, who's the head of the, or the president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, extended his annual greeting to the Hindu community, or the Hindu community, on behalf of the entire church, asking all of us to join hands in promoting religious freedom as our shared responsibility by asking the leaders of nations never to disregard the religious dimension of the human person. Tomorrow, at nine o'clock, there will be a, a gathering of the religious leaders, the principal religious leaders of the world. There's a train that will leave Termini Station in downtown Rome at nine o'clock, bound for Assisi. The host on the train will be Pope Benedict, and he's invited many of the leaders of world religions to be present, as well as representatives from 50 nations. They will travel together to Assisi on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the same event that was called by Pope John Paul exactly 25 years ago. And when they arrive at Assisi, everyone will make a solemn renewal of their joint commitment to peace. As I said, more than 50 nations will be presented. But for the occasion, I think it's particularly interesting that Pope Benedict has invited people who are non-believers. He's invited non-believers to join in this particular religious event based on the conviction that all people, both believers and non-believers, we walk together as pilgrims in search of the truth. Paul, in the letter to the Romans, reminds us today that the Spirit of God helps us in that search. We pray that this day we will always trust in the Spirit of God. Allow ourselves to be open, allow ourselves to be vulnerable, trusting in a God who loves and cares for us, and not to live in fear, in fear of dialogue, in fear of sharing, in fear of searching, and that we allow ourselves to engage in open and constructive dialogue both within our church and with people of other religious traditions. In doing so, I think we live the words of St. Paul today. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Please stand and join with me as we pray. 
We join this prayerful celebration this day for the, the brother Desmond, the brother of our lector, who celebrates his 80th birthday, and he joins us every day via television from England. And he, like so many who join us via television for the internet, we lift them up, their celebrations, but as well the many intentions that so many people have asked that we remember here at this celebration. For all of them, for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for each one of us that we can be peacemakers, that we know peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, that we be able to reach out and touch others, that peace be a reality around us. And for that grace for each and every one of us, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those people who are in senior homes in hospitals. We lift up their intentions, we lift them up to the Lord. And we ask that God will bless them. And for them, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord our God, may the bread and wine you give us for our nourishment on earth become the sacrament of our eternal life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him you've renewed all things and you've given us all a share in his riches. Though his nature was divine, he stripped himself of glory and by shedding his blood on the cross, he brought his peace to the world. And therefore he was exalted above all creation and became the source of eternal life to all who serve him. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And he gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember our brothers and sisters, who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed in the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace.
this is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and happy are we who are called to share in this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. With those of you at home, join with me now in this spiritual reflection of Father Pedro Arupe. More than ever, I find myself in the hands of God. This is what I've wanted all my life, from my youth. But now, there is a difference. The initiative is entirely with God. It is indeed a profound spiritual experience to know and feel myself so totally in God's hands. And let us pray. God our Father, you give us a share in the one bread and the one cup and make us one in Christ. Help us to bring your salvation and joy to all the world. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Fitzpatrick, and Father Lynch, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass.